My name is Dave Ward. This is a lot of sweat. That is a stationary bike from Mix Fitness. This is a proper road cycling shoe with a cleat in it. And this is not. Let's talk about why you might want to think about getting a pair of something similar to this. All right, so as I mentioned, what we have here is a proper pair of road bike cycling shoes. These are, uh, don't let the laces fool you, these are actually road shoes. Um, these are Giro Empires, they're a fairly expensive one. These were probably close to 300 bucks. You don't need to spend anywhere near that much. Uh, I've just been a road cyclist for years, did triathlon for a while, rode mountain bikes, mostly riding road bikes though, and these were my old shoes. So when I got my mix bike, I just bought a pair of these SPD cleats, that's S-P-D. Uh, which is the proper cleat that fits on the other side of the paddle and put these together to use with my mix bike so that I can leave my road bike shoes with the other cleats on them, which is, just uses a different type of pedal. So let's talk a little bit about fundamentally why these are better. A lot of it has to do with the stroke, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, but what you're also dealing with is just a lot of stability. This thing is really, I can't bend that, okay? Now, a pair of indoor cycling shoes, a little bit more flexible, but let's take a look at these guys. There's just not a lot of stability or support there. Now these are kind of a particularly minimalist type of shoe you might say, but that's not gonna provide you with a super solid base. Whereas these are, these are stable and they're rigid. And that's what, one of the main reasons why cycling shoes are better. The other reason just has to do with the cleat. So let's go down to the ground, get, you, get a look at the pedal stroke and how it differs from just a regular sort of trainer and a proper cycling shoe. All right, start by just taking a quick look at the pedal itself. It's a two-sided pedal. So on this side, you have a cage with a little tightening latch. I'll show you that in just a sec. On the other side, this is the SPD cleat. That's where you would clip in, okay? So let me just get these on and ratchet them down and show you what some of the problems are. Get these a little tight, but you get the idea. Pull that tight, you just leave that go. So here's what I see a lot of people. This is what most people are using to do their workouts. And what they're doing is they're kind of pointing their toe. Particularly, I'm up out of the saddle now, particularly when they're up out of the saddle. Okay, this pointing of the toe version, because if you were to keep your foot flat, which is a much better cycling position, and you try to pull, you can pull your foot right out of them. Uh, let me show you that again. <laughs> so I thought it was gonna be a little bit more resistance there, and it wasn't, so. <sighs> You also gotta just fight with them, which I just hate, but it's this kind of pull toe motion so that you don't pull your foot out. <laughs> if you try to pull at the top of the stroke, you pull your foot right out. So let's look at what happens when you use a proper cycling cleat. So first of all, they're really easy to just get in and out of. I mean, literally you just kind of step right in there. Uh, if you're a little hesitant because you think they're gonna be hard to get in and out of, they're not. I mean, you literally just turn your foot like that and they come out, pop your foot back in, they go right back in. And as you can see, now I'm secure, right? So now, I can keep my foot flat like that. And when I, when I get to this part of the stroke here, I can pull. Now I'm pulling, right? So it's not just this push, push, push. Now it's push and pull. It's a more complete cycling stroke that utilizes hamstrings. But also put your calf in a better position. If you're pointing your toe like that, you're really just kind of disengaging your calf. But if you put it like this, you can see how my ankle rotates a little bit. Especially if I get up out of the saddle. I need some resistance here. If I get up out of the saddle, see how my foot like points and pulls and points and pulls. It's just overall a much more stable stroke. And again, like you have, you're on this really stable platform because the shoes are really, really rigid. So what I suggest you do is to find a place that sells them and go try them on, go get fit. Uh, I would call around sporting goods stores, probably your best bet. Um, you can try cycling shops too. The, the ones that are specific to indoor cycling are a little bit more like a trainer. Um, they're still a little, little bit more rigid, but you know if you're doing like the mixed bike workouts using the tablet, a lot of them are hybrid workouts. So you'll do the first half of the workout might be uh, strength or stretching, uh, and then you ride for the second half. If you're gonna use a shoe like this, like I just do the first part barefoot and then I just pause it put my shoes on real quick and then jump on the bike. And it, it takes maybe another 30 seconds. It's not like a huge transition, but the indoor cycling shoes that I have seen people wearing um, are pretty effective at just doing both. You'd probably be good. So that's probably a better option. I just, again, you don't need to spend this much money. I just happen to have these because this is something I've been doing for a really long time. 
Um, but yeah, go get fit. They do tend to run uh, pretty true to size and they're European sizing. So just keep that in mind if you are gonna order them online, they're probably gonna be European sizing. All cycling shoes are gonna be that way. And I'm not sure about the indoor cycling shoes, but I hope that's helpful. Um, this is part of a larger playlist where we're talking a lot about the mixed bike, a lot about um, indoor training, why we're doing this stuff in particular. One of the things that isn't talked about a lot in, in the videos of the workouts, at least the ones that I've done, is why we're doing all this. And it's way more than just randomly thrashing yourself with short intervals or long intervals or whatever the workout might be about. There is actually a really specific science behind heart rate training and how you'll be able to know whether you're improving or not. So um, I'm talking a lot about that over the next coming weeks. So check that out. You'll find a link in the description to either the playlist on our YouTube channel or thefitclubnetwork.com, which is where you can find all of our info. I hope this has been helpful for you. Hope you get some shoes. If you do, leave me a comment. Let me know what you got and, whether you, and how you like them. Especially if you're getting indoor cycling shoes, um, I'm always happy to make brand recommendations for folks. So with that, I'm out of here.